Welcome to Science Easy Tech channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about Psychology 10 minute series, Unit 1, that is Introduction to Psychology. This is my Part 2B video. In my Part 1 video, I have dealt with meaning of psychology and meaning of behavior. In my Part 2A video, I have discussed with history and origin of psychology in that we have particularly discussed about major schools of psychology if you have not watched those videos i have given the link in description box suggested end card and i card or you can watch our channel playlist psychology for bsc nursing students this video is useful for bsc nursing students post basic bsc nursing students as well as students who are studying b ed and general psychology so in this part 2 B video we are going to discuss with major perspectives of psychology as well as major landmarks in the development of psychology before moving on to the topic if you are new to science easy tech channel just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates let's move on to the contents what we are going to discuss in this part 2b video history and origin of psychology under that we are going to discuss about major perspectives of psychology and major landmarks in the development of psychology So let's see the major perspectives of psychology. There are six major perspectives in the field of psychology. What are they? Biological perspective, cognitive perspective, social perspective, developmental perspective, humanistic perspective and psychoanalytical perspective. So these are the six major perspectives of psychology. Let us see one by one. Biological perspective. The psychologists uh, with the biological perspective, they believe that your people's behavior, your mind and mental activities or events were due to the result of glandular and nervous system activity, were due to your uh, glands and the hormones produced by the glands as well as the nervous system, the neurotransmitters produced by the nervous system. Uh, everything is going to influence your uh, mind as well as the mental events and your behavior so in biological principle perspective what they are telling they are telling your glandular system and your nervous system is responsible for your mental activities or mental functioning and your behavior Cognitive perspective. This states that behavior and mind are related to the processing of information from the environment through the senses or sense organs. See, our uh, behavior and uh, our thinking, everything depends on what we are seeing and how we are perceiving it or what we are hearing and how we are perceiving it or what we are feeling and how we are perceiving it. So, mostly the information, what we are receiving through our sense organs uh, like eyes, ear, skin, uh, okay. So, we have so, so much things. So, that uh, information, whatever we are receiving through the sense senses and how it is processed whether you are taking in a good sense or bad sense it is going to determine our behavior and mind activities so cognitive perspective it is relating the processing of information from the environment how it is processed by means of senses and based on that the behavior will be uh, that okay based on that the behavior and the mind activities are going to get influenced for example if you are going to perceive the things in a right manner our behavior also will be right suppose the same thing if you are going to perceive in a different manner or if you are going to think very badly then the behavior is going to be in that direction okay Next, social perspective. So, man is a social animal. So, in social perspective, how we are going to interact with the others, that is going to influence our mind and behavior. Okay, the person, how he is going to mingle with others, how he is going to get along with others or move with others. Okay, the interaction between and among people influences the mind and behavior of the person. So, this is dealt in social perspective. 
Next, moving on to developmental perspective. As people grow and mature, they have changes in their thinking. Okay, the thinking of a child is different from your thinking of an adult person as well as an elderly person. So, as our growth and development uh, increases uh, and as uh, maturity increases, uh, the way of thinking style, the way of reasoning, the way of judgment, everything is going to get different, and this is going to influence our activity as well as your mental development or mind and behavior so this is with regard to developmental perspective next moving on to humanistic perspective the aim of humanism is to help each person to attain his fullest potential in his life so we all know maslow's hierarchy of needs so the highest is self actualization so we are making the person uh, to fulfill his own uh, potential in his life that is to achieve maximum in his life so based on your self-esteem self-confidence everything your uh, behavior also will get influenced so humanistic perspective tells that uh, we are helping uh, or to help the each person to attain his fullest potential in his life that is self-actualization self-esteem self-actualization and to improve his confidence which is going to determine his uh, behavior Next, moving on to psychoanalytical perspective. So, this is a psychoanalytical model is given by Sigmund Freud here. The unconscious things, whatever is there in your unconscious mind, your unconscious motive and defense mechanisms are going to have an influence on your behavior. So, we are going to uh, dealt about defense mechanism in our forthcoming classes. Uh, okay. So, the unconscious motives and defense mechanisms influences your mind and behavior. So, in psychoanalytical model itself, unconscious, subconscious concept is given more importance. Okay. So, based on that only, your behavior also will get influenced. Already, we have discussed in our part 2a video. Next, moving on to the major landmarks in the development of psychology. So, 1879, Wilhelm Und inaugurates the first psychological laboratory in Leipzig, Germany. Already we have discussed about this. In 1890, Principles of Psychology was published by William James. William James has told that psychology is the study of mind. So, Principles of Psychology was published by William James in 1890. In 1895, Functionalist Model was formulated in the schools of psychology we have discussed about functionalism so in 1895 functionalist model was uh, formulated in 1900 sigmund freud developed the psychoanalytical uh, or psychodynamic perspective theory okay in 1900 sigmund freud has developed psychodynamic perspective where the unconscious and subconscious drives are given more importance in influencing the behavior in 1904, Ivan Pavlov wins a Nobel Prize for work on fundamental principles of learning. So, we have a learning separate unit where we will be learning Pavlov's experiment also. In 1915, uh, uh, strong emphasis on intelligence testing. There are so many intelligence testing scales are available. So, that has been developed from 1915. 1924, John B. Watson, an early behavioralist, publishes behaviorism. In 1924, John B. Watson, he published uh, publishes behaviorism. In 1951, Carl Rogers publishes client centered theory helping to establish humanistic perspective so in humanistic perspective we are helping the individual to achieve the highest potential in his life already we have discussed so here in 1951 Carl Rogers publishes client centered therapy helping the person to achieve humanistic perspective that is to achieve his fullest potential in life 1953 B.F. Skinner publishes Science and Human Behavior Advocating the Behavioral Perspective. So, he B.F. Skinner, he concentrated on behavioral perspective and he publishes Science and Human Behavior. In 1954, Abraham Maslow publishes Motivation and Personality Developing the Concept of Self-Actualization. So, you, can, you all know that about Maslow's hierarchy of needs starting from basic needs uh, to in the hierarchy the topmost is self-actualization in 1957 leon festinger publishes a theory of cognitive dissonance producing a major impact on social psychology so he concentrated on social psychology and he published a 
book called A Theory of Cognitive Dissonance, so which had a major impact in the development of social psychology. In 1985, increasing emphasis on cognitive perspective. Cognitive perspective is, has given more importance. Okay, in uh, we have seen so many perspectives under this cognitive perspective. Uh, you were thinking the way how you are going to perceive through the information through your senses are given more importance. Next in 1990 greater emphasis on multiculturalism and diversity. Okay, Multiculturalism various cultures and diversity of people are taken into consideration. Then 2000 new subfields developed such as clinical neuropsychology and evolutionary psychology. So many newer subfields have been developed such as clinical neuropsychology and evolutionary psychology has came into advancement in the from the year 2000. So in this video we have seen about the various perspectives of psychology as well as the major developments in the landmark of psychology. Hope this video is clear for you all. If you still have any doubts feel free to post your doubts in comment section. Thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel my previous videos link I have given in description box and suggested end card or you can watch our channel playlist for more videos. Thank you once again.